Hi everyone. I just want to do a quick review about this 2006 Infiniti G35X. This car has 87,000 miles. It's nine years old, but it's in fantastic shape. Right now I have Pirelli Cinturado P7 All Season Plus tires on here, B rated. New brake pads and rotors were just completed. I have access to this car right now because my car is in the shop getting bodywork completed. But as you can see, there's very few blemishes on this car. And this car is a fully loaded model. Navigation, premium package. The only thing it's missing is satellite radio. But it's an all-wheel drive vehicle. And this car also has the, uh, what is it called? The smart key, intelligent key, Infinity calls it. So basically I can come up to the car and open any of the doors with the push of a button just beeps and as you can see there's a good amount of cargo space the seats do not fold down but there is a center pass-through for skis it's not actually the deepest of trunks at least vertically but it goes back fairly decent weight it has strut type hinges so it's not going to impede on your luggage it's nicely finished liners all the way around there's also a grab handle right here very solid thunk when it closes too. This car hasn't gotten a car wash in about two weeks so I apologize for the dirtiness. It still looks great though. So as we come around the car here you can see that this one is the diamond graphite color. It's a very popular very popular color for this car when it was out. Headlights have never been replaced. They're xenons. They're really clear for the lenses. There's no visible wear. Let's take a look inside. It does not have the turn signal markers on the mirrors. It's a little bit kind of before that. When you step inside you'll notice that this car is kind of the first generation you know, Infiniti G35, which it is. So the luxury features are not quite up to par with today's standards. So let's start this thing up. You can just push into the key fob here or into the thing. There's also a CD player problem which is very common for this type of car. But from the first time you start it up you can hear that engine purring and you just know that this is a performance vehicle. Analog clock which you don't get on a lot of luxury cars these days. But as you can see or hear that CD player is super annoying. Um, it just happened to jam and that's a very popular very uh, high rate of failure for that. This car also has navigation. As you can see it rises up from the dash. There's never been a problem with that motor. It reminds you when you need an oil change, which this car does. And you can go into different settings, you can set your destination, there's different options. It's an LCD screen, go to your map, you can zoom in, zoom out as far as you want. It also has a bird's eye view function or view. And you can also do a split screen view, which you have one side is going to be your, you know, it, it looks geographically straight down on the road. Otherwise, you have the bird's eye view on the left hand side where you can see this kind of view that obviously a bird would have. You can go to information, you can go to trip computer, you can go to fuel economy. And this car I've never gotten over 30 miles to the gallon, and even when I was hypermiling, so it doesn't get the greatest mileage. I'd say in highway driving you're going to average 23 to 24 miles to the gallon on premium gas, which isn't too great, and probably about 17 in the city. No warning lights except for my seatbelt, obviously. Everything's in great shape in this car. Navigation system CD or DVD is under here. It's not a hard drive based system, so it's not very fast in its operation. Still pretty snappy though for this, this age of car. Sound system's a Bose audio system. I believe it's 225 watts. It's not a surround sound system, but it has fantastic quality. You have a lot of different storage compartments, heated seats, leather seats, and this car is black leather. It also has the uh, Bluetooth phone system in this car. So if we go to Bluetooth right here, you can call. Call. This command is not available because no phone was found. Make 
basically to turn it on you just press the button once and you can say a, a voice command otherwise to turn it off you press the button twice and then it turns off the telephone system and it goes back to whatever you're listening to on the radio or if you have the radio off it turns off the phone system completely so let's take a look under the hood here we have automatic headlights we also have fog lights available as well leather wrapped steering wheel cruise control you have what else do you have here? You got intermittent wipers. They're not automatic wipers, not rain sensing wipers. Auto dimming rearview mirror, it's very effective. The side mirrors are a little small for this car, but otherwise the visibility in this car is actually really good. He has a lot of glass area all the way around. Bose audio system with the subwoofer mounted back there that you can see. All right, let's take a look under the hood here. will warn you when you're stepping away from the vehicle with the key fob in your pocket because it's an intelligent key and it can be started uh, without using the key fob placing it into a hole in the car. Let's see here. Here we go. This car has what you call a, uh, doesn't have strut, struts for the hood unfortunately. It's an aluminum hood so it's actually very, uh, very easy to lift up. Advanced front midship. So this car has an engine that's mounted a little bit farther back from the front axle, which is, makes it more of a mid-engine car than a front-engine car. Um, otherwise, it's a little bit dirty under the hood here, but it's actually a very smooth running engine. It's a little loud for the exhaust, but that's part of the sporty nature of the vehicle. 280 horsepower, 270 foot-pounds of torque, routed through a 5-speed automatic transmission with overdrive. It's a 3.5 liter V6, and it's very smooth, very torquey and powerful actually compared to a Honda V6, which is what I'm surprised about the most. So let's take a look in the back seat quick. You cannot remotely open the doors on the back of the car. You can only remotely open them on the front of the car with the intelligent key. My coat here. We step back into the car here. Very solid door thunk. You have uh, map pockets back here. They are very tight, so you can't really fit a whole lot in there. Um, I believe they just got like an ashtray. Rear AC vents, it's very comfortable. This car also has a secret feature where if you move, take away this buckle here, you can see there's a little lever, so you can actually recline the seat. And as you can see, you can recline it. That one is in its uh, full upright position. You just pull back the lever and it goes back up into its position. Fold down armrest, cup holders. Also you have ski pass through, but no fold down rear seat like I said before. Subwoofer is mounted right there, latch for your um, kids car seats. Plenty of good rear visibility, even if without a backup camera available in this car. The 07 uh, cars used to have have the uh, of option available, but the uh, 03 to 06 did not have a backup camera. So you have uh, lights all the way around here that you can individually control, which is really nice. You also have this card holder, which I don't think a lot of people use at all. Side impact airbags, rated, rated an acceptable rating in the uh, Institute for Highway Safety crash tests on the side impact, and good in the front crash. Active head restraints for the front passengers and seatbelt pretensioners for the front passengers, but there are no active headrests for the rear passengers, and there are no active head restraints for the rear passengers as well. Otherwise, this car is really a fantastic car to drive. It has a lot of power, great handling, and it is really a joy to drive every day that you have it on the road. Door, soft, door close really soft in the back. And they're very heavy on the front. This car has a very Germanic feel in the way it drives. It's very solid platform and structure. And apparently it's been improved ever since. Ever since this car came out, they kept improving the structure. So I'm sure the new ones are just as rigid as the German car. But I've loved driving this car and I, I, I wish I could drive it every day. The fuel economy is not too great. It's not the quietest car on the road compared to the Acura TL. Um, it has a very stiff suspension, but it has very minimal body roll, great steering feel. An excellent uh, brake and throttle uh, reaction. 
So it feels very sporty to drive, and the exhaust note is <laughs> really good. So I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this uh, video today on this review about the 2006 Infiniti G35X. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.